We have here in Texas the highest power laser in the world. We have developed new methods of trapping and pooling any atom in the periodic the table. Biological basis of Alzheimer's disease, creating new drug therapies. Here is to make a fuel, hydrogen, just with sunlight. It really is a revolution in what it means to be a molecular biologist. The opportunity to do this kind of research as a freshman was one of the reasons I chose UT. The original Human Genome Project took 10 years to complete. With this technology, we can now complete a human genome in six months for $10,000 or less. So our lab works on tumor viruses, large tumor viruses, Kaposi sarcoma associated herpes viruses. And so for us, the next generation sequencing is essential to understand the targets and what these things are doing. How do the viruses make more viruses? How do the viruses utilize these gene products to perhaps directly cause tumors? As a freshman, I did an aptomer selection against the protein secreted by the bacterial Burkholderia pseudomallei, which is a pathogen responsible for meliodosis. And in the aptomer stream, we take randomized libraries or just pools of a bunch of different sequences of DNA or RNA. You do learn the basic techniques that you would learn in another lab, but you also you get to be innovative in your application of those techniques. So once you're assigned a target, you're in control of the process. So in order to measure the black hole in M87, we had to use this instrument on the McDonald Observatory at the 2.7 meter called Pyrus P. This allows us to observe the largest area of the sky at once and take spectra. So the mass of the black hole in M87 is 6.6 .6 billion times the mass of the sun. What's nice about M87's black hole, it is so large now that the event horizon, this point of no return, is in the reach of being able to image it with current technology. This is phenomenal because we've never seen the event horizon of a black hole, so we do not know whether black holes are black holes. The black hole in M87 has such a large event horizon that we might be able to image it against the background objects, uh, and people are working on that now. Working memory is sometimes called scratch pad memory, so it's the kind of memory that you hold on to for a short period of time to make a decision or to guide an action. Working memory is affected in a variety of neurological diseases, everything from Alzheimer's disease to uh, schizophrenia to ADHD and e even Parkinson's disease. At the Center for Learning and Memory, Dan Johnston uses multi-photon imaging to observe individual neurons at work. In my lab, we've discovered a form of learning that's tractable in the laboratory that engages working memory, and that's allowed Dan Johnston and I to start a collaboration to try to understand when working memory is engaged and then the neural basis of how it's produced. Eventually, we're going to run out of fossil fuels. Well, the goal here is to be able to make a fuel, hydrogen, just with sunlight. Well, it's like photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, chlorophyll is the basic photocatalyst. The real challenge is that there are a huge number of possibilities, billions and billions actually. So we have an apparatus based on the scanning electrochemical microscope where we can scan a light beam over the array and we can test them very, very rapidly. So we have this quick and maybe dirty way of looking at a lot of stuff. Two floors down in the basement of Robert Lee Moore Hall, for one tenth of a trillionth of a second, we can create a light brighter than the surface of the sun, 2,000 times the output of all power plants in the United States. We have here in Texas the highest power laser in the world. It has a power that's in excess of one quadrillion watts, which is 10 to the 15 watts or a petawatt. So if you focus light to that intensity, onto a bit of matter, you can create extremely high temperatures, and that really is the name of the game here, is using a laser like this to create matter in the laboratory like you find only in exotic reaches of the universe. One of the things that is a byproduct of these very high temperature plasmas we make is that we can drive nuclear fusion in the lab, but this could potentially lead to a source of controlled nuclear fusion that could someday be a controlled energy source. My lab is interested in the biological basis of Alzheimer's disease and with the hope of creating new drug therapies. So rapamycin is exciting because we have discovered that it promotes the expression of a particular ion channel and we think that this ion channel may be important to Alzheimer's disease.
if we can target this ion channel, we may be able to prevent some of the cognitive problems that are associated with Alzheimer's disease. The control of atoms is one of the grand challenges of modern physics. We have developed new methods of trapping and cooling that are applicable to any atom in the periodic table. A series of pulsed magnetic field coils stop and trap any paramagnetic atom. What does that mean? With this coil gun, I can stop all atoms. 